Tyson McGuffin here. I am on Cameo. If you want me to put together a uh, special message or any sort of request, uh, maybe it's pickleball related or maybe it's for a birthday, let me know. Take care. Have a good day. Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin. Welcome to the McGuffin Show. We are on episode 11. Happy to be here. And uh, it is currently about 10 degrees here in Coeur d'Alene, so we've got a little cold front going on. Uh, just just talked to my mother. She lives in Seattle, Washington, and it's actually snowing in Seattle right now. Believe that? Yeah. It's kind of surprising for over there. Don't, don't get a lot of snow on the west side, but definitely cold enough. It's freaking freezing yeah i know it is for sure for sure and people in seattle and portland and on the west side of the mountains do not know how to drive in this in this crazy snow i'll tell you what they are not equipped but but kyle mckenzie even though he is from squim he, he can drive in the snow sometimes sometimes um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but better than uh, my wife i know that better than your wife yeah yeah i'm, I'm the go-to when the weather gets bad in, in the driving department that's for sure <laughs> in the driving department. Want to thank. Uh, want to thank all of our viewers and our sponsors this week. Um, be sure to follow us on the MacGuffin Pickleball Club uh, YouTube channel. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. Um, and be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel. Um, also, to remember uh, to help us keep this content free. And to do us a big solid, uh, please check out the affiliate links below. I'm going to say that again. To uh, continue this podcast, to keep this YouTube channel going, uh, please do us a solid and check out those affiliate links below and get, get, get yourself some cool stuff. Um, let's, let's see here. We got Valentine's Day coming up, huh? Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah my, I always tease my wife. She always calls it Valentine's Day. My wife's like, okay, what time is it? Valentine's. <laughs> Any big plans with, uh, with, with you and Meg? Uh, yeah, so we actually uh, did it a little early. Um, okay. Yeah, so I, I called the Coeur d'Alene Resort a couple days ago, was, was planning to obviously do something, or uh, I was going to have a stay at the resort tonight and kind of do some fun stuff. But uh, part of the package was uh, uh, there's an infinity pool at the golf course. And they heat their pool uh, kind of like a hot tub. It's like 105 degrees. And um, anyhow, so it was an open uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday because it was going to be so cold. So, right, right. When I, so when I called Wednesday morning, I ended up just booking a room Wednesday night. So we actually did our Valentine's Day uh, kind of deal Wednesday night. Got a, got a room at the resort. And then we did the infinity pool and uh, had a little cheese plate, had some hot cocoa, you know, and uh, partied it up. <laughs> love it love partied, it partied partied hard man <laughs> way too hot <laughs> love it. party it up on a what, a weekday what was this a wednesday or something yeah cheese plate and hot cocoa get baby it. uh <laughs> get after it well you're gonna outdo me so so callie and i we uh we generally kind of rotate every year of kind of who plans it and she did a pretty good job last year and so i'm i'm in full-fledged husband uh scramble mode uh for tomorrow but that's when I think that's, that's when I do my best thinking and my creativity really gets going oh. when I'm under pressure. So put myself, <laughs> put myself in the pressure moment and try to deliver <laughs> nine, nine game three. Hey, Hey, you can trust me. Practice. Situational, you can trust me. <laughs> situational practice right here. <laughs> pressure is a privilege. Love it. Love it. Isn't that a, isn't that a, a Ben, a Ben quote? It is. It Pressure's is. Pressure is a privilege. It I is. like that. Yeah, I, like I think that. that was uh yeah, he was, he was doing a little, um 
a little like live stream for his uh, camp company. And yes, he, he brought that up. Pressure is a privilege. I'm not going to lie. That dude under pressure is um, a pretty clutch. Yeah. And, yeah uh, he's, uh, he stepped it up on countless occasions. Seems like, I mean, you're in the same boat too. I think both you guys, both you guys deliver in the big moments. I mean, Mark, Mark of a champion for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But um, um, yeah. Uh, just so the viewers know, uh, talking about Ben under pressure, I have lost eight singles matches, eight over the last four years. And uh, in those eight singles matches, I had match points and Ben was able to produce his best stuff in the end and somehow mm -hmm. freaking find a way, but uh, eight singles matches in the last four years. So it's never going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna be nine no no not number nine. Be no nine. Number nine not not 53 and two okay right. do you have any idea how many singles matches you've won in the last four years do you know what your record is uh, like a, against against ben i was just thinking across the board because you said you lost eight to, to anybody right or is that just eight to ben uh, no 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 just just eight to ben yes. eight to ben yes. okay my so point, my yeah point. yeah so in in singles over the last four years let's see um yeah i've lost to ben way too often um, I lost to Kyle Yates once in 2018. Okay. And uh, let's see, who did I lose to last year? I lost to Frank Anthony last year. I was hurt. I do remember that one. I was hurt. It was in Tri Cities. <laughs> I didn't I should see that not, one coming. Not going to lie. Not, no disrespect should, against Frank. <laughs> no, 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 no disrespect at all. But I should have not have played that tournament. It hurt my pride. I'm not going to lie. And uh, uh, yeah, Frank. And then this year, Zane and Sherry. Um, but uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, anyhow. Um, off, off of that, off of that topic. Uh, but yeah, so the Valentine's day was, uh, was, was a great time. Uh, and then actually to, uh, Sunday night, we're going to do at the quarter lane resort and the convention center, they do like a fire and ice dinner. Oh, very um, nice. yeah. Like a little, uh, uh, three course, three course meal. And they got the whole spread and, um, it's like a big buffet style uh, uh type thing and then you can walk outside check out the ice sculptures and they got a bunch of fun stuff going on so more of a uh, more of a formal formal attire type type venue i'm probably not going to be tucking in my sweats and tucking in my socks let's just say that <laughs> keeping the sweats at home for that one <laughs> probably yes. not going to have that probably not going to have the tuck job <laughs> yeah all um, while we're on the subject might be your worst look in general. I, I was just talking to somebody about it the other day. It's funny. Cause like half of your style is like modern edgy. And then every now and then you throw out the, the gray sweatpants oh, with yeah, the baby. shirt tucked in butts hanging out. You look like a, a 70 year old basketball referee or something. I don't, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're thinking. You're either way have way too good a fashion sense for me or, or you're, you're missing the boat on that one. I don't know. Yeah. The, <laughs> Uh, the answer is I don't give a. F okay, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my sweatpants. I'm gonna tuck my sweatshirt in. I'm gonna tuck my socks in, and I'm gonna be nice and comfy. All right, you have it. You heard it here first, folks. He do doesn't care. The man doesn't care. <laughs> be comfy. I love it. Uh, let's let's see here. Uh, family's doing well. Yeah, everybody's doing good. Uh, it's nice to be nice to be back. We were gone for. Uh, seven, eight days for, uh, the world pickleball down in, down in Florida. So it was, it was nice to have the last four or five days, just, uh, being home with them and, and just relaxing a little bit and getting back on, on my, my at home routine. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. I was going to say being on the road without, uh, four kiddos and a wife at Sue's house is obviously very different than being at home with those crazy kiddos running around and all the above. I, uh, totally get it yeah i mean it's it, it's nice being able to to do the pickleball thing and do what i love but definitely like the day i come home because for the viewers that don't know my I have four kids they're all uh eight seven six and five so so very close together and they're all at that age where you know they want dad around so when i get home it's like uh i'm hit with a, a tornado of, of children fighting for my attention for about the first two days <laughs> it's like i gotta i gotta have like a red bull some caffeine right before i walk through the door because Cause it's on right when I get home and <laughs> I've been gone for a while. So it's all good, but definitely, uh, definitely something I have learned. I have to prepare for, uh, right when I get home, get that, get that ping pong game sharpened up, buddy. Oh yeah. We've been, we've been having battles. It's been a lot of fun. That's too funny. No, no, it is. It is totally different coming home. Uh, um, definitely, uh, obviously less stressful on the road. Uh, but, uh, sure. always, always very appreciative to, uh, come home. Um, I, I, 
always always feel like the uh, uh, first two days of or like the first couple of days of coming home, it's like playing catch up, right? You're playing catch up with your time, oh, yeah. playing catch up with your routine. You're trying to spend time with the kids. You have business stuff going on. Uh, yeah, traveling on the road, I'm not going to lie, is is uh, is a uh, is not too shabby at all. That's for sure. No, for sure. Yeah, definitely less stress when you're when you're on the road than than when you're at home, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice, nice little slice of reality when you get home. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you're in a similar boat. I mean, wife, kids. I mean, we were just staying in the same spot. It seems like each of us had that evening routine, you know, Yeah, right. have our our meal, like do the FaceTime call with with the wife, with the kids. It's it's the standard. But it's pretty, pretty, pretty laid back. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, uh, yeah, been, uh, uh, training the last, last week or so, um, uh, kind of a, uh, uh, fun deal. Rafi, uh, Rafa Hewitt and his wife, Brooklyn actually, uh, uh, just moved to Coeur d'Alene. So, so been working out with that guy all week. Uh, we got, got him all, uh, taken care of, got his wife all taken care of. So, uh, um, yeah, they're going to be, uh, uh kind of helping out. Rafa is going to be teaching a little bit. Uh, Brooklyn's going to be helping out with our, with our oldest son, Sky, who has special needs. And, uh, my, my wife is spread pretty thin. So if she can be more efficient and obviously have some more time on her hands, um, everybody is happier. So, yeah. It seems um, like a win-win. I, um, I was watching, I think Rafa's feed. And so he gets access to the, uh, the MacGuffin gym. Now that's a, uh, that's a pretty big deal. At a, and, at a, <laughs> at a price. At a price. At a price. So Callie was telling me, do you have a, do you have that, that heated? Are you, do you crank up, crank up the uh, temp when I, you're working out in there? I smoke that thing out. Oh, smoke geez. it out. Okay. Smoke okay. It. It's about, it's about 85 or like 90 degrees in there. Yeah. It's uh, we have two infrared heaters. I actually just got two more. Um, it's not, it's not hot enough. But, uh, <laughs> so basically you're saying in a month nobody's gonna recognize rafa because he's gonna woo! be about half of his former self just sweating it out sweating it out uh wrestler style right yeah you know what uh, um, <laughs> I, i'm not gonna lie his body right now is pretty beat up okay i'm yeah, just, just gonna from say this that. last week and yeah everything. yeah we've we've gone like four mornings in a row we worked out a couple days in a row i got him even doing yoga the man okay. is not flexible at all if, if every, I mean, this, this image that I saw yesterday of him doing a crying or is it crying? No, it's called, it's called, it's called the happy baby, happy baby, but happy baby in yoga is when you're laying on your back and you, uh, uh, uh you use your index finger and your, and your thumb on, on both hands, you grab your toe, you kind of rock back and forth. So watching Rafa try to try to grab his toes in this pose, I lost it. Oh, Talk about a, a missed uh, missed Instagram moment right there. Oh, I know, I know. First time. Doing we, we were both crying laughing. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. No, it's but, funny. I mean, I, I think Rafa and I are, are almost in a similar position in a way. Um, he's trying to, to get a little bit fitter. I, I don't need to shed the pounds as much, but my focus is the same, trying to get my body just ready to compete as an athlete. So I actually haven't played played any pickle they haven't done any training over the last four days which is unusual for me but just been focusing on lifting at home trying to really get more of a, a conscious stretching uh routine to really just focus on strength training and, and flexibility and, and get a nice base for that first and then fill in some of the pickleball skills i feel like i've almost gone the opposite way where i've just focused on play 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 right. but i'm in my mid-30s now and you start to feel the aches and pains if you're not setting the setting the base with just getting your body ready so i think him and i are in a similar spot where we realize you know going forward if we're going to play this many events this many tournaments we've got to get the body got to get the body right first that's very true for sure um, hey, can you can you tell the viewers um, kind of what you do for injury prevention with your shoulder? I think that's a that's a, a nice um, you know nice little note for for the viewers. Kind of how you use your bands, how yeah. you're able to modify workouts, kind of based on your shoulder injury, kind of things of uh, things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um... Like, you know, maybe several of us that, that caught the, the pickleball bug, <laughs> um, I was just playing way too much and really not doing any strength training. And, you know, several days in a row, my shoulder would just start to kill. I've had a couple of times where if I was neglecting any strength training, it would hurt so much that I've had to pull out of tournaments, um, you know, even flying to the event because I could barely lift my arm. So I've realized that on a daily basis, I have to do 
uh, about 10, 15 minutes of, of some different strengthening exercises with, uh, I use the bands. I take those with me to tournaments. Um, I take turmeric uh, pretty regularly, uh, try to do that on a daily basis, even when I don't have any pain, just to keep the, the inflammation down. And then obviously if I have a little bit more pain or I'm close to a tournament, then I'll, then I'll do the ibuprofen thing, but try not to rely on that too much if, if I don't need it and more trying to go the, the turmeric way. But um, with me, if it, again, if I play a lot and I'm not doing a certain amount of strength, strength training, um, I just get to a point where I have to take a week off anyway. So it makes way more sense to just wake up for me. Um, if I can get my exercises in first thing in the morning, it seems like it just jump starts my day. So that's, what's been working for me and yeah. the body's just feeling, feeling a lot better. And it's hard, you know, as, as we're pickleball addicts, we have things we want to work on in our game. It's hard to sometimes pump the brakes, but for me, and sounds like for Rafa as well, I think we're both just realizing the body has to be right first. If you want to compete at the pro level, the athletes are now starting to look and feel like more like professional athletes now. And so if you're not doing the same yourself, you're at a disadvantage. Yeah. I mean, just like what Kyle said, the athletes are starting to be real athletes. Now it's very <laughs> it's true. true. It's, it, 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 I mean, the, the, sorry, the, the half-ass athletes that, that didn't used to train are now um, obviously a bit more invested uh, you know, whether it's financially, they're, they're making more or they're getting better, better matches from, from other sponsors um but it, yeah it just seems like the level overall is getting is getting much better the defense is getting much better uh and, and it just mm -hmm. came kind of seems like the athletic ability and like the the ability to scramble uh uh and and find find your most athletic self uh it just kind of seems like taking a look at the men and the women um players are starting to do stuff off the court uh whether it's in the gym whether it's seeing a trainer or they're doing stuff at home using using bands um, obviously I just, I just built the home gym. We have the, uh, Peloton treadmill, Peloton bike. We have the fitness mirror. We have all this content in there so we can, um, you know, I can, uh, I can do my, ex uh, do my exercises off of the, uh, stock content, but, um, no, it just, it just seems like if you're not doing stuff off the court now, it is very, very difficult to, to be in that top five or to, uh, you know, find, find that podium. Very Absolutely. True. I mean, we talk about, uh, you know, your fitness routine and, and how, how, uh, conscious you've been about really being a professional in regards to that. Um, I don't know exactly his routine, but, but somebody to mention as well in the fitness department, we've been, you know, when, when you guys battled, you know, a long yeah. time, uh, obviously he was crazy talented, but I think he's shown that next gear of dominance and consistency across the board. You can see he's physically stronger sure. uh, yeah, and, yeah. and from what i've heard he, he's made a real uh, conscious effort to uh, implement more of a, a weight training program at least over the last you know year and a half two years and, and it shows in, in the consistency on the on the courts and one thing i've gained an appreciation for especially down in florida is not just how physical the game is in singles but the game's becoming really physical in doubles as well like a long day of humid sweaty Florida, you know, Florida pickleball, like a couple days in a row of, of if you make pretty good runs and doubles, I mean, it, it can, it can wear on you physically as well. Staying in that crouching, you know, squatting position the whole time, different type of fitness than, than for singles, but definitely still something where people are having to cross train in order to be ready for a, for a full day of pickle. Very true. Very true. Take a look at Matt Wright. Matt Wright has lost a bunch of weight. He's taking yep. care of his body. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there. Ben didn't beat me until he lost his baby fat. I'm going to let all the, all the viewers know that Ben was not able to beat me right. until he lost all that baby fat. But I mean, it's true. Like when, when he made that transition of like 18 year old kid to, Hey, I'm a man, I'm, I'm working out now. I'm 20 pounds less. And he's, uh, uh, pumping his chest up a bit more and his legs yep. are a little bigger. I mean, yep. all in all, he was, he was a much better athlete. And, uh, I mean, we, we, you know, we can all see what it, what it did to his game. It totally skyrocketed his game. And, um, um, you know, he, he, he does everything very well, but what really, uh, took his, took his game to a whole new level was, uh, spending time off the court. And I mean, mm -hmm. you take a look at his trunk. I mean, I would say he probably has the thickest legs on tour. <laughs> Yeah. The guy is built like a freaking ox uh, with, with his uh, lower half, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I think a lot of that's hereditary, but you see the moment that he started doing a little more weight training that filled out quickly, right? Just it his did. body type has, has the ability to have that thicker, a little denser look. Yeah. yeah you know, and I'm, I'm not actually, you know, I'm, I'm not too different than that. Uh, 
naturally than Ben. I have a little bit of a thicker natural build. And so I got to, I got to get back in the weights and, and find that again. I've lost the weight and become physically very, very weak. So there's a new Kyle on the horizon. Look out there, folks. There is a new Kyle <laughs> on the horizon. You know, take, take a look at Simone. I mean, she's the fittest she's ever been and she's playing at a level that no 40 year old sh should be playing at. But I mean, you know, give her, give her all the credit and she's lost a bunch of weight. She's super thin. She's, she's fit. You know, she's a uh, uh, very explosive with her first step. I mean, all in all, if you're going to, if you're going to be in the top five, um, you obviously need to um, kind of have that balance of half and half, have training off the court. And then, uh, you know, obviously showing up, uh, 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 drilling, uh, doing, doing all the right stuff on the court. But I mean, just like what we said, I mean, so much of players upsides, are uh, if there's anybody around him, if there's anybody that is, yeah. uh, you know, top 10 or top 15 around him. So yeah. um, yes, yes, doing stuff off the court is very necessary, um, but but also to being in an area kind of like a South Florida where everybody is and marinate down there for a couple months. Yep. Um, you know, uh, so it, having having people in your area definitely uh, definitely goes a long ways. Yeah, you have to have both. You have to have both for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, so pickleball playground update. We talked about this last episode. Uh, there's a new facility in Spokane, Washington. Um, I am acting as a temporary director. Kyle, Kyle McKenzie here is acting as a head pro and, uh, we got some fun stuff coming up. We're going to get programming started, uh, Monday programming started in March. Um, so kind of fun. Uh, we're going to have a pickleball one-on-one class. We'll have a one-on-two and then we will also have a big kid skills and drills class, which is for your, uh, for a plus level. Um, also we're going to have a league going on. Um, but, uh, the, um, the, uh, clinic that is coming up, uh, here in about two weeks, it's on February 27th. It's going to be led by, by your very own Kyle McKenzie, this, um, guy. this guy right here. And Rafa Hewitt is going to be, uh, is, is going to be assisting Kyle as well. Um, and that is February 27th, uh, eight to 10 AM is uh, for 3.0 to 3.5 level and 10 to 12 is for 4.0 to 4.5. Um, you guys can get registered by emailing info at Um Get yourself registered and uh, we're going to have some fun. It's going to be a dinking clinic on, on that Saturday and there's going to be open play directly after. Yeah, come on down. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, both Rafa and I uh, can definitely point you guys in the right direction, regardless of your level, uh, to gain some really good habits and put yourself in a, a winning position when you're at the kitchen line, for sure. Let's let's see here. So uh, camps coming up. Uh, Tyson McGuffin signature PB camps coming up. We have lots of camps coming up uh, coming up in February, March. Uh, the first camp coming up is the PPA Phoenix camp. Uh, 22nd and 23rd of February on that Monday, Tuesday after the PPA tournament. We have 32, um, 32 for the camp. So we are all full, super excited about that. The next camp coming up is in Wichita at the Chicken and Pickle. That is March 3rd and 4th. Uh, and then St. George, uh, which is after the PPA on that Monday, Tuesday. That's March 15th and 16th. Spokane, Washington, March 17th and 18th. That's going to be led by your very own Kyle McKenzie. Uh, Palm Desert, California. Uh, we're going to be running two two-day camps back-to-back. Cammy -back. McGregor uh, will be assisting me, and Kyle McKenzie, of course, will be assisting me. That is March 18th through the 21st. And then the last camp of, uh, of the month for March is at the San Antonio Chicken and Pickle. And that is March 22nd through the 25th. Um, for all these camps, you guys can go to my website, go to TysonMcGuffin.com uh, and get yourself registered. Invest in your game. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we love teaching. Uh, we'd love to have everyone. And, and you know, Tyson and I have taught separately and together for a long time. And uh, it seems like you know, generally across the board, I, I would say objectively, I think people are having a pretty positive experience and definitely uh, taking a lot of good stuff away from it. So uh, we'd love to have you. Um, excited to to crank a few more of these out over the next couple of months. We're going to be busy, man. Yeah, for sure. Stuff. Uh, uh, be sure to uh, continue uh, looking at the, or I guess uh, checking up on the YouTube channel. 
We're going to be posting instructional videos uh, starting here very soon. I know that we've posted three already. We have all 10 episodes of the MacGuffin show on there. Um, so, so maybe if you're on the fence about taking a camp, uh, please go to the MacGuffin Pickleball Club YouTube channel and uh, please let one of those instructional videos win you over. Again, I want to thank all the viewers and sponsors. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. And remember, to help keep this content free, uh, please do us a solid and check out those affiliate links below. Okay, guys, uh, taking a look at the topics for the week here. Uh, we're going to talk about World Pickleball Championship. Uh, we'll talk about the results, and we'll talk about uh, just our general experience. Um, also, too, we were planning to do PPA podium uh, predictions for the Phoenix uh, PPA tournament coming up next weekend, but I'm not going to lie. The, the event player list is not available on pickleballtournaments.com, so we cannot give you any predictions. Um, but, we will, but we will give you predictions for Tampa, which is the weekend after. Um, so just so you're aware, uh, we have the PPA tournament in Phoenix next weekend, and then the following weekend is Simone's uh, tournament um, in Tampa. Uh, which is a PPA as well. So we have Phoenix and we have Tampa. Um, so, so we'll do Tampa PPA podium predictions, and then we'll get into our instructional nugget. Um, so yeah, you know, taking a look at World Pickleball Championships, um, you know, obviously coming from two years ago, uh, you know, it was right after Christmas. We talked about this on episode 10. It was right after Christmas. We had to fly out Christmas Day. Uh, uh, obviously, Jan Poppy didn't have control of the weather. It, it had rained couple days in a row and we kind of had to like uh, move all the finals to one day and play a bunch of matches on that very last day. Anyhow, it was very chaotic and I'm not going to lie this year. I feel extremely bad for the tournament organizers, for the volunteers, for the tournament staff, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was, it was not ran great. It, it, it rained. It was very cold. It was very windy. And I was, uh, uh, uh more than excited to get the hell out of there, if you know what I mean. Um, but um, um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, uh, starting from the, from the very first day, we had the team event that very first day on that Wednesday. Right. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to, uh, uh, to get thrown in that team captain role. Um, it was very unfortunate that Ben Johns and Adam Stone and uh, Deckel, Steve Deacon, Irina yeah. Tereshenko, I don't know who else was in that, in that mix, but... Uh, one person uh, ended up testing positive uh, for COVID. And with that being said, everybody else was around that particular person. So they all did the correct thing and they did not come. So yeah, credit to them. I mean, obviously yeah. they're put in a tough spot. They're down there, they're competitors, you know, they want to play. As far as I know, most of the other people weren't infected, but just knowing that you're exposed, they did the, the safe and right thing and, yeah. and, and sat out good, you know, good for them. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and what's tough too, is that if anybody was ready for that tournament, Ben, Adam Deckel and Steve had been, had been basically in Fort Myers for three weeks training <laughs> for WPC and they were all together. Yeah. And so, yeah, just that, that week leading up, uh, I'm not going to say who, but somebody got sick. They were all in the same house together. Yeah. Um, so they had to do the right thing and all sit out. But uh, anyhow, so Wednesday morning, I was notified about all this. Uh, I, I got asked to obviously fill in as, as the uh, uh, coach, and I was more than pleased to do that. Uh, Team USA got, got the W. Uh, I think it actually came down to my match against Andre, uh, which was uh, late at night. It was pretty cold, I'm not going to lie. And I'm almost certain that I had my uh, socks and my sweatshirt tucked in. <laughs> That must have been what, what gave hey, you the edge right there. Well, it, it, he, could, he couldn't concentrate. He's like, what the heck is Tyson wearing? <laughs> is this even Tyson McGuffin over here? Or is this his grandpa? <laughs> grandpa T. Grandpa T. <laughs> but kind of, so that guy had to be kind of a weird match going in though, because I mean, obviously you guys want to win. I mean, I don't know how competitive the vibe was um, yeah, right, you know, compared right. to a different match, but right. you guys are about to play doubles the next day. Yeah, I know. No, no. You know? Sure, so sure. kind of a right. different, different dynamic going into that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but no, I mean, overall the players were super respectful with, with my coaching and they were all ears. They were, they were dying for attention and stuff like that. So no, I, I think the, the overall coaching experience yep. and the team atmosphere was super fun. Uh, I think it looked good on TV as well. And it, and it just kind of seemed like uh, everybody really enjoyed it. It was a nice uh, 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 kind of 
first day event, you know, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I believe that, uh, that it was all tied up uh, coming into Andre and I's match. I ended up beating Andre in singles. And then um, uh, that last match of the night was, I believe, uh, Catherine and uh, Catherine and Callie. But overall, yeah, it was a fun, fun little team experience. I think anytime we can get a bunch of really good players like that together and uh, we can kind of have that team camaraderie, um, I think uh, I think it definitely works on all levels. So and, is, and, is that and, the first time? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I think I think it's just nice to have a little variety in pickleball too. There, there's really not too many team events where you have a coach and you have top ten players all kind of competing with each other and and you know. So um, yeah, I, I thought it was, a, it was a nice little dynamic. Yeah, I agree, and and that's how I really feel just personally about uh, WPC. Anyways, I think yeah, you're absolutely right. It could have been ran a little bit better, but I really like that it's a different event, you know, for, for a stop. I like the idea of pool play and, you love, know, you get in your flight that. and you get, you get to compete against, you know, some different people. And you kind of know that you're going to get a set number of matches against people. So the night before you can do a little bit of strategizing or game planning. And so I just, I like the format uh, quite a bit. And yeah, I thought that the team USA against team world was a, was a cool idea as well. How did you feel? Is that the first time you've been kind of in a coaching type role with other, you know, fellow pros, or have you kind of been in, been in that role before or something similar? Yeah. I mean, I mean, usually anybody that I play with in doubles, I'm a coach at heart. So I usually can't keep my <laughs> mouth shut. If you know what I mean? I think, I think you're, I, I think, I think you're in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, I can be for sure. Yeah, I can be. Just shut up Tyson. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so that was, that was kind of my first time. Uh, yeah. I guess coaching kind of at that level. Uh, but no, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it seemed like uh, team USA um, enjoyed my company as well. So it's nice, so, no, nice. overall uh, fun event, but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, one thing that I, that I love that I, that is a true takeaway from WPC is love the idea of pool play. Yeah. Uh, add some more pressure. There was a lot of like uh, uh, weird losses or, or, or kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, just different things going on because of that format. It's so true. Double elimination. Uh, so many good teams can lose early. They can find yeah. it later on. They can tiptoe their way back through the back draw. Uh, uh, I just like the idea of like pressure in the pool play and pressure that you have to, you know, be a, a one or two out of your pool to, to, you know, make it in that, that top eight bracket. Um, so just, it, 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 it it just kind of seemed like overall there's more pressure in pool play. Uh, yeah. uh, there's more value behind it. Um, but uh, yeah, no, definitely. definitely well, here's, here's an example. So, I mean, I, I was going to kind of mention, I thought some people um, just from what I've seen really stepped up specifically against you in pool play in some of the playoffs. I mean, people pushed you and I didn't think it was so much that your level was dipping. It was just guys took it to you. They were, you know, hitting great passing, passing shots. And uh, Eden, you know, played you very, very close uh, in the, your very first round of pool play. I think you ended up beating him 15, 13, but he got off right. to a big lead and was, right, was painting sure. lines. I'm pretty sure if you would have lost that match, um, you probably wouldn't have made it out of your pool or it would have been very, very dicey. And then you end up obviously going on to, to win the tournament. So kind of a, a fun, a fun dynamic or a different type of pressure. Yeah, no, there's, there was a lot of that stuff going on. Like, for example, Jay and Pat, if they would have lost, so Jay and Pat, I, I believe, were, were, were two and one, and they yep. were playing Rafa and Johnny. Yep. If they would have lost to Rafa and Johnny, there, there would have been a, like a three-team tie for two and two. And Jay and Pat ended up ended up you know beating us in the semis and then making the finals. So, um, and, you know, not going to lie, games of 15, pool play, pretty <laughs> dicey. <laughs> anything can happen. It's all, it was oh, also, I mean, you know, anything. windy. There's conditions too. Wind, so, yes. I mean, anybody's game. I mean, Matt Wright and Colin Johns, the team that, you know, on paper you looked at as thinking probably we're going to finish in the top three at least, yeah. didn't didn't make it out of their pool. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. So, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. You uh, sure def definitely have to find it very early on in that game to 15. Yeah, for um, sure. Set the tone early and get up early. And, and um, um, yeah, no, I, I felt, um, and, and an extreme amount of pressure, uh, you know, in those games at 15 and then also to just in that, in that pool play format. But, uh, uh, it is nice to kind of do some research like the night before, know who's in your pool, dissect, you know, each team, uh, kind of know who you're playing, know what time you're playing. Right. Uh, it's, it's better scheduling. It's better TV scheduling. Uh, so just, I, I'd like that organization of scheduled matches. You kind of know who's in your pool, 
uh, there's obviously more, more pressure, uh, in that, in that pool play setting as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, just nice to have a different format. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That was a breath of, uh, of fresh air. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, um, I would say overall, um, I don't believe that WPC is probably going to take place again. Um, hmm. I, I think with how things were run, um, I, I uh, think that it's either going to get moved to a different location or simply it's just not going to happen again. But uh, kudos to Jan for putting in the effort. Kudos to, uh, to all the tournament staff and volunteers for dedicating their time and uh, making the event what it was. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough too, man. And you know, you don't have control of the weather. Uh, no, you know, yeah. the, uh, Tried to tried to lay uh, lay some tarp down on like court one on 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 that Sunday as it was raining, <laughs> but I mean overall, uh, Jan did what he could to make the event what it was. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. But um, uh, a couple of things I want I want to talk about. I thought it was kind of interesting that the females did not play their final. Uh, the uh, the females didn't play their women's final or their uh, doubles final. And then they did not play their singles final either. So that was, uh, that was a first for me. And I believe that was probably a first for most tournament directors uh, in that, in that position. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how much, <laughs> I don't have all the details uh, for the viewers at home. Um, Callie Smith, who was in the finals, is LDS. She's she's Mormon, and it's pretty well known that she uh, does not compete on Sundays. And credit to her, I was actually uh, raised Mormon, and my family's LDS, so I know that religion well. And I can tell you that a lot of people within that religion, if if it's something that's your living, which playing pickleball professionally is her living, uh, you know, I would liken it to an NFL player who you know is drafted, who played at BYU or Mormon it's pretty rare that someone would, um, you know, decide to, you know, hold to their beliefs strongly enough, uh, when it comes to their profession. So credit to her for having that kind of integrity and, and sticking to her guns, but yeah, it did pro provide a little bit of a complicated situation as to when that final would be played. I don't know exactly what happened to that conversation, but they ended up not being able to make it work to where they played it on Monday. And so it kind of fizzled out from there, which was too bad for the tournament and too bad for the spectators. Um, I got to say though, that I really don't know what the answer or the reason was for the singles final not being played because Callie wasn't, uh, wasn't in that. And so to me, you know, I'd love to hear a reason, but I, I anything would just be speculating but to me it seemed like that's definitely something that could have happened I, I don't know the reason for that for that not taking place yeah i i believe there were so many schedule changes and there were so many last minute changes that took place and uh people got notified very late so i think just with all those drastic changes uh and with it not being as professional i'm pretty sure the women just just bowed out okay gotcha. um, but but uh but but one thing that i do not like is that for somebody to wait around all day to play a match because of their religion and they have to play it on a particular day. And then for another individual who knows what the situation is uh, uh, to, to, be, to maybe be butthurt uh, over a select match and then just flat out leave and not only leave, but, but uh, put the person who was supposed to play that final later on in a position where now she doesn't know what to do. Uh, right. She she was she was gonna fly home on Sunday because she was gonna play her final Saturday night, and 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 all in all, it's just uh, it was a it was a crummy ordeal. So I feel I feel bad for Callie, yeah. and uh, I like Callie a lot. I'm I'm playing a couple of tournaments with her this year, um, but kudos to Callie for being strong, trusting her beliefs, and uh, yeah. um, you know. Uh, going about it that way so yeah it's too bad because yeah Callie was waiting around all Saturday thought that was the plan they were going to push it to Saturday night and mm. ended up just not happening and they couldn't make it work uh Sunday or Monday either yeah yeah but uh uh something else that was kind of interesting was uh obviously you know uh, uh people had the option to use the drop serve yeah. and I'm not gonna lie I did not see a lot of people using the drop serve no uh yeah we speculated we said well you know we'll see each of us were kind of planning on bowing out serving kind of our regular way and, and very curious was, the only yep. person i saw use it um and i played against him in, in some rec games the day before i didn't watch him play his matches but I, I think he was planning on using it quite a bit with spencer smith 
he uh, he was oh. using it, I would say, at least half the time or or more than half when we were training the night before. I have to see, you know, see his matches to see if he was using it pretty regularly. But it definitely seemed like the Zane serve or the, the flick or chainsaw serve, whatever you want to call it, was used a little bit more. And, and honestly, it's, to me, much more effective, much more dangerous I think so too, uh, than the sure. drop serve. I think so, too. I think uh, uh, you should try to consider the the ball technology and if you can go about it where you can flick your fingers and get that ball to dance even more uh and with how the durable really doesn't have a true bounce anyhow it would make a lot of sense to go about it and to use the advantage of flicking that sucker using that chainsaw serve and getting a yep. bunch of action when, you know once the ball bounces but uh well, it was my first time you know my first time i did play zane he beat me pretty bad it was the one match i had filmed unfortunately but uh you know i really I, you have a pretty heavy you know high arcing uh aggressive serve so i didn't think i would be that bothered by it maybe just bouncing a couple inches higher but uh talking with zane and, and experiencing it it's not just the backspin and the amount of top spin he's able to generate he's now um flicking it with side spin one way or the other so now you not only have to account when the ball bounces for it jumping up but uh it can jump to either side as well as up too so i had i had one where i uh embarrassingly whiffed that shot off to the side that i didn't expect so uh i think it's funny because you know you myself and, and rafa all trained together from the same area um, we've all played zane now um in the last month um, at least once, and we've all whiffed on one of our returns, I think, against that serve. So why not? Maybe not the best best company to be in, best category <laughs> to be in. But that's us. That's too funny. That's too funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, even taking a look at like the amateur stuff, like there, there wasn't a whole lot of people uh, using the drop serve, um, you know, maybe, maybe at the lower, lower levels. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think then, at the lower I, levels, some people are jumping onto it just because it's easier for them to get in, but it's not right, really being used as a weapon for much that I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably the the comment of the weekend, I'm not going to say who, but Spencer Smith, I, I've got a lot of respect for Spencer Smith now, if you know what I mean, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spencer Smith, granted. I've never heard the guy say more than four words in his in 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 my four years of knowing him. He's but pretty quiet, yeah. He's very quiet. But he told some individual that they don't deserve a handshake. Uh, and and this individual is known to be the biggest bully on on tour, if you know what I mean. And I've yeah. I've had I've had my uh uh I've had my exchanges with him. But had a couple uh, any, of run-ins. Yeah, I had, I had a couple of run-ins. But anyhow, hearing it from Spencer, I literally laid an egg. <laughs> I, I was, I was not ready for him to present me with that. <laughs> you don't deserve a handshake. You don't deserve <laughs> Take it. That. Take that. <laughs> you do not deserve it, buddy. That uh, was <laughs> hilarious. Oh, getting dicey, getting dicey hey, hey, on the tour. I like it. it. It's Add a little feisty. bit of drama, drama to this game. It's good. Good for the we, game. We need it. We need it. Hey, by the way, uh, got some new podcast gear. Yeah, check that out. Yeah, got some out. hoodies. Got some hoodies. Going to be selling these on the website. Also, too, take a look at the hat. Ooh, Kyle, I like the hat, man. You're going like to be getting a, a couple of these. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Am I getting the, the gray sweats, too, or the gray? Yeah. <laughs> you're <laughs> getting those the, bad boys in. You're getting the full tug, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, 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 but pecker down when you tuck it, all right? Well, right. Yeah, that's just, yeah, uh, you know. everybody knows that. Shoot. Yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> Um, okay, so taking a look at the results at WPC, um, uh, you know, obviously the women uh, uh, split everything. It was a yep. it was a it was a split type of Sunday. Um, but uh, taking a look at the mixed, um, uh, we uh, Catherine and I ended up losing to Matt and Lucy in the finals. I've got to play better in Game Three, plain and simple. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on me. Uh, Catherine and I ended up winning a, a dog fight against Callan Dawson, who's a freaking stud in his three point stance, hitting those lobs, best offensive lob in the game, <laughs> best offensive lob no, in the game. Sure. And that lob will make your shorts go to your ankles. Okay. You know, he's pretty ballsy with it too. I mean, it was God. windy. I saw him use it in a couple of matches. I think match a, point, up, a, match, match point down, you know, like didn't care about the scores. Like this is my game. I'm throwing up the law, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I like love Callan's stance. I love, love, love Callan's stance. <laughs> love, love Callan's game. I mean, the guy, 
uh, he's super athletic. He plays very physical, holds the yeah. paddle up very high, yeah. has a hard time driving, obviously. Uh, played uh, Division One baseball back in the day. I didn't uh, know dink, that. Okay. Dinks, dinks really well, counters really well. Uh, didn't know it that he had that much offense, but as you saw, he played with Simone, and I'm not going to lie, the guy has some sneaky offense. For sure. Um, and uh, um, a little a little tip for the viewer, something that Callen does extremely well, he, he uses a Pro Connects that is very lively. His speed up, uh, for example, uh, he, his speed up, you – you kind of know it's coming and he, and he really doesn't speed up all that hard, but when he speeds up, he knows that when you come back, if he's out and extended, his yeah. recounter will be better than your counter. So it's, yeah. it's kind of like a bend to a certain degree. He kind of baits you into fighting fire and then he knows that his recounter and his paddle technology will be coming back in a hurry and he can, and he can beat you head to head. I thought he did, uh, did that very well against Catherine. He would try to just kind of get Catherine fighting head to head. Catherine would, would try to counter back. And then that, that pro connects power would just take over from there. If you know what I mean? Um, but, um, well, yeah. And with this, with this choked up grip and I've, I've kind of copied this recently, wasn't specifically trying to copy him, but, but I'm doing something similar and I can tell you, yeah, if you can speed up, um, and just camp on your backhand on the next ball, he can cover almost all the zones that would be there. And as long as he's rolling his knuckles down, getting that next ball directionally down, it's pretty tough. Uh, to be able to go through somebody who does that. So somebody who um, he knows his game really, really well. And, he does, uh, he does. you know, it just seems like as we're trying to do all these fancy things to get better, he just kind of goes the opposite way where he kind of simplifies it a lot less can go wrong. And, you know, it's, it's somebody worth watching to say, Hey, you know, For why sure. am I, why am I taking this really difficult path when, when there's an easier option in front of me? Yeah. Somebody who's very efficient at the kitchen line, like has a great lean, takes a bunch of dinks out of the air, yep. takes a lot of half volleys, rarely ever takes a step back. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, you know, talk about a guy who's totally maximized his game with his potential. Um, but uh, anyhow, no. So it was kind of, it was, it was interesting to see Callan in that mixer role. Cause I've never really seen him with that style of offense. Or, or what he that, with, predominantly with plays of, men's more often than mixed, correct? Any, like, any, like any, in the men's, and yeah. he never speeds up in men's. He, he, right. he generally dinks, he always counters. Um, but uh, anyhow, so yeah, Catherine and I, uh, we ended up losing the first game and we're down 0 7. I'm not gonna lie, we're down 0 7 in game two. And um, I told Kyle this, and I hope Rob Barnes is not hearing this, but uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie when I can just let the tension go and I can snap a paddle real quick. Generally my level gets a lot better at zero seven in game two. Not going to lie. Um, I ended up, I mean, it, it was, it was late at night. You know, it, it's cold. The ball's pretty hard. It's tough to control it. So um, I ended up like missing a drive by four feet wide. And then I missed a block volley, like at the bottom of the net. So anyhow, I, I just kind of felt like either I had lost touch or there was, there was a dead spot in my paddle. Um, but I had two bad misses in a row. I'm not telling the viewers uh, uh, to do this by any means, but uh, in this particular case, um, I ended up snapping my paddle over my leg. I got a new paddle. I got my shit together. I came back. I found the forehand. I started being super offensive. Catherine uh, was able to read a couple speed ups that Callan brought at her. She was able to beat Callan head to head a little bit. I think when she was able to beat Callan head to head a little bit, uh, uh, as we all know and mixed, if the girl can beat the guy, uh, that yeah. goes a long ways, and that will that will allow me to insert myself more, and it forces Callan to have to slide over a bit more. Um, so uh, anyhow, it. it, it Kind of, kind of seemed like things just started rolling in our favor. Um, obviously, never, never count yourself out. But uh, yeah, we ended up winning uh, game two, like 13-11. I think we fought off three or four match points. And, um, and then I kind of figured if we could get past game two, then we would definitely roll in game three. And that was the case. Yeah, you um, definitely had the momentum for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, tip, tip for the viewers here. Um, you know, lost the first game. We're down 0-7 we bring it back to like nine all at that given moment. There's so much pressure sitting on the other side of the court. I knew that if we could just get like get game two game three is, is, is like in the bag, you know? So 
kind of felt like Simone was getting pretty tight. She was missing drops. She was missing a couple of dinks. When, when, the, when the best player in the world can't put a drop in and she's missing dinks, there's something very wrong there. And that's a true tell that she's probably tight. So we ended up taking advantage. Um, but uh, kudos to them. I mean, that's their first time playing together. Yeah. They had to freaking yeah. battle all day. They, they ended did. up, I mean, talk about, uh, uh, you know, talk about odd losses. They ended up losing first round in their, in their first pool play match, gain of 15, right? And yeah. uh, they ended up losing to Cassandra Gurky and Johnson Cola. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't believe that Simone's ever been, ever been Gurky, but, uh, but she definitely got Gurky. She knows what it feels like now. <laughs> she knows what it feels like. And, and it, and it usually feels like this. It's that, that it's thunder, that, thunder punch backhand. Oh, it's that, Look it's out. that, it's that Tanya major backhand coming at you. <laughs> it's tough, tough to defend yeah. against. I mean, it, it might not be the most beautiful looking shot, but let's be honest. The backhand <laughs> thunder punch is super effective. And it gets down. That's right, baby. It gets down, gets down, it gets fast. down. Um, but uh, yeah, we ended up losing to uh, Matt Luce in the finals. Uh, uh, singles. Uh, yeah. I mean, just like what you said, you know, singles, I was down zero nine to Eden zero nine, very first, uh, pool play match of the day, gain to 15 down, down zero nine. But I think singles is the, is the one event where, you know, I mean, you can, you can crack eight or nine winners in yeah. under, in under two minutes. And, um, it, it just kind of seems like anybody can get hot in singles and for, and from, and, uh, and, and it, kind of seems like lately singles is a is a game of runs yeah it it's a Great it's time. such a game of runs yeah and so um uh yeah i mean i was down zero nine to eden uh granted i was on the i was on the bad side so if you were taking a look at the live stream over the weekend um when when you were i guess when the player was looking into the bleachers and was looking at the white banners um uh uh it was it was extremely difficult to see yeah. So when I was down zero eight, ended up switching sides. I I started out on the bad side, had a had a tough time seeing, and uh, as Eden's passing me left and right with those slick passing shots, um, I just I just knew that if I could get to the stronger side, I could I could somehow, uh, you know, get some stuff going, find some momentum, string some stuff together. And so anyhow, I was down zero nine. I went on a thirteen one streak <laughs> and uh, uh, ended up. Uh, uh, Winning 15 13, uh, played Kyle Yates after, uh, actually got a got a, a 15 0 win over Mr. Yates. And then Mr. Sincola, I'm not going to lie, put the smackdown on me. I um, hadn't been beat that bad in a while. I ended up losing 4 15 to John Sincola. Uh, uh, and John was using a, a flick toss and he was uh, hitting a serve out of the air with that flick toss. Not going to lie, I was not getting a true bounce yeah. when I was returning off of that serve. It was kicking everywhere. Um, uh, well, so I much mean, of singles is defined by the quality of the return of serve, right? Yeah, and right. so if you're you know, going for a certain temperament or amount of depth or a target on your return and your contact point's getting messed up every time, I mean – a player with your experience and your skill level, you can see, you could see visibly how uncomfortable that it made you yeah. on the court. Right. Yeah. Right. You can right. see it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And uh, it's kind of funny too. talk about the streaks. You said you beat Kyle 15, zero. Yep. Sincola beat you 15, four and either right. before or after uh, Kyle before. beat Sincola. Yeah. Uh, Kyle beat Sincola something like 15 to six. So yeah, right. just shows that when someone gets hot, it's tough to slow down that train yeah. uh, in just a short game like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I ended up uh, taking first out of my pool. Um, and then I had to play Andre in the quarterfinals match. I should have totally lost that match. I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it was, it was one of the first times in my career where I felt like all eyes were on me. Ben wasn't there. I had all these weird, like inner demons talking to me all day mm -hmm. and, uh, um, Kudos to Ben. I mean, for him to be in the limelight, for 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 all eyes to be looking at him, and for him to be so consistent with his results time and time again, it's it's pretty stinking good. Cause I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I mean, for for God's sakes, I mean, I'm in one tournament without Ben, and I felt so much pressure during that day of singles. Yep. Um, and uh, and it, and it's just pressure that I that I don't feel when I'm when I'm in that number number two spot. You know, kind of sitting right behind Ben.
it's kind of nice sometimes not being the overall number one favorite because you have at yeah. least one or maybe two people in the draw that on paper you're not supposed to beat. So you kind of can be hungry for that all day long. But I think this is the first time in a little bit that, you know, with no Ben there, everybody on the, on, you know, on paper, you're a pretty heavy favorite, right? So yeah. all these matches, a shortened format, you have that expectation by everybody else along with yourself that you're supposed to win. And, and that, that expectation can be cancer in your mind sometime, right? Like you don't want to think it. about that. You want to think about what's going on between the lines and those thoughts creep in. You want to throw them out, but it's easier said than done. Yeah, no, no. Very true. Um, uh, yeah. You start second guessing yourself a little bit. You start second guessing some of the strengths in your game. You know, like I'm, I'm thinking about technique. I'm thinking about my serve and I'm like, gosh, when was the last time I was thinking about technique <laughs> during, during a tournament? Like that should, that should never happen. So it's funny how, yeah, just weird things were popping in my head and, and I just had a hard time finding the correct roadmap for the day, you know? Um, but uh, you know, it was, it's kind of a, uh, another, another story, but uh, uh, back in 2017, uh, I was the one seed going into the U.S. Open. Uh, Marcin Rospetsky was not there. Okay. And, uh, you know, I had just lost to Marcin uh, uh, at Nationals in 2016. I had, you know, only been playing for about a year and a half. Anyhow, number one seed going into the U.S. Open. All eyes are on me. I'm the guy, you know, and I've, 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 I've been dreaming about winning my first major, right? And oh, yeah. uh, uh, um, I ended up showing up, you know, my – Usual deal, showed up like a week early, got a bunch of training in, got a bunch of singles in. Uh, U.S. Open is, is a little different for most tournaments. U.S. Open, the uh, uh, very first Sunday is, is men's singles. Hmm. And then there's age events throughout the week. And then uh, uh, gender doubles and mixed doubles is over the weekend. Anyhow, on that Friday before singles, I had contacted Ben Johns, who was baby Ben back in the day. <laughs> and uh, this is probably a story that no viewers have heard. Yeah, I haven't and, heard this one. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. So, um, uh, so contacted Ben. You know, Ben, uh, ben was kind of in the area. He was living in Naples. He was playing with Kyle. Uh, but he had just started, right? I think, I think Ben had played 2016 Nationals, but he didn't do a whole lot. Um, uh, anyhow, so... So there was probably like a, a four month span from nationals to April, right? Um, so ended up playing Ben in some in some practice games on that Friday. I think we played like, I don't know, seven or eight practice games. And I don't believe he got more than four points. Wow. Sunday rolls around, Sunday rolls around. Uh, I, and I roll through everybody. I believe I'm in the semifinals. So if you, obviously, if you win your semifinals, you get to the finals and US Open is single elimination. So if you can get past the semi, you were in the final final and um, um, ended up playing Ben and not going to lie. Ben was, uh, this is how freaking good this guy is. Uh, uh, but Ben was trying to hit left-handed forehands. He wasn't playing cat and mouse. He was trying to drive. Anyhow, I was up 11, four, six, two. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking I have this match in the bag. Uh, ben doesn't look like there's, there's much life left. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, like, in like a split second, Ben is somehow able to like produce a pretty high level of playing cat and mouse. He takes the paddle out of his left hand. He only plays with his right hand. He starts chipping his backhand. And I swear to God, within like a two minute span, uh, uh, it, it was six, two in game two. He brought it to six, six. I ended up losing game two, six, 11. And then I lost game three, uh, I don't know, six, 11 or eight, 11. But the moral of the story was that hmm. Ben was able to find a very, very high level with cat and mouse, just like that. Just yeah, experimenting and, and just, Oh, I guess this works. And I, and I, I this. ended up, I ended up losing to Ben and then Ben ended up kicking Kyle's ass in the finals. Jeez. And, uh, but that, that is the only other time where all eyes were on me. I was the guy there was, you know, Marson had been beat for four years. Marson uh, was uh, sitting out for the, us open because of a knee injury okay. um but uh uh anyhow yeah yeah kind of a kind of a cool story huh yeah i mean i i knew that ben won that year um i didn't realize i guess how under the radar he he probably was you know going into that um 
if, if you know if he really hadn't done a whole lot prior to that that's kind of yeah, no, crazy no. to go from you know pretty average or mediocre results and then just all of a sudden win the tournament and he was what 18 years old at the time yeah, or something maybe some, somewhere around 17. there yeah he was yeah. he was a he was a baby and on top of that him and joey ended up taking bronze in uh dubs and uh and and uh ben had done nothing before that didn't place at any tournaments right. uh but i honestly don't think he I think he may have played one turn. I think he may have played two tournaments like before 2017 U.S. Open, maybe like a lead up tournament to nationals and played nationals. Um, but uh, I know, right? Pretty freaking good. Yeah, I mean, Pretty. obviously had a had a good training partner in Kyle, but still, it normally takes people, you know, quite a few times on that stage before they feel relaxed enough to yeah. to produce yeah. their best stuff. It's true, it's true, but. Uh, uh, so yeah, ended up, uh, was, was playing Andre. I'm not going to lie the whole day on Thursday. I did not play well. I had to find a way I had to dig. Yeah. I had to bring out the dog and, and I, uh, uh, um, I was able to find some of my better stuff later that night, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down three, nine in game three to Andre and I'm sitting there thinking there's no way in heck, like there's, there's no way in heck I should, I should be in this position and uh, anyhow, yeah, was was able to kind of claw my way through it. Uh, started going for more on the serve. Started to find more forehands. Started to find my forehand pass. Um, brought it back to nine all. I think I ended up winning 14-12. And I, I uh, think I fought off a couple match points as well. And then ended up playing uh, Sherry about an hour later. And I'm not going to lie. When I played Sherry, I found my bearings. Yeah. I'd, I'd found some of my best stuff and uh, ended up beating Sherry pretty handily. And then and then beat beat Jay in the finals on Sunday, and was nice to have you in my corner as I was getting that W on Sunday. Absolutely, um, man. Yeah, happy to be there. And you know, it's funny because you know the Andre match. I was actually watching Rafa play Zane, and he was battling with Zane. And uh, you know, nothing against Andre at all, but he doesn't play a lot of singles. Thought that you know he'd give you a game, but but you'd you'd get through that get through that one. Um, you lost the first game, and I was a little concerned but not even a crazy amount because i've seen you be in that position so many times before and uh, it was the second game and it was early but you're down i don't know four two five two something like that and right. um you know it's funny because there's two types of competitors the way i see it is there's a there's type that um you know that can stay more even keel and they don't get too emotional and they, they find their focus that way but i think uh we're the same in this way where getting a little bit more animated getting louder um, kind of, uh, you know, beating yourself into finding your best level, you know, works for us. But within that, there's, you know, there's positive energy and negative energy. And I felt like um, you were obviously frustrated, understandable, but you're getting just a little negative on yourself. And I came right. over and, you know, I want you to be yourself out there. I want you to be loud. Be and I said, I said, just find a little bit of that, you know, positive energy. And I said, <laughs> I'll try to get the crowd into it too. Cause you're, yeah, I, sure. you're the type that, that I think feeds off of the energy around you. And uh you know, from there was still a battle, you know, Andre played, played well, made you earn it. But right. uh, sometimes it's just that small little adjustment into in getting yourself going. I think it's the same thing with, with you and you're playing doubles and you broke your paddle. I mean, obviously not saying that everybody needs to, to throw a fit and break their paddle, but I think for you, it was more of that message that, no, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. I'm not going to lose this way. I'm not going to make these errors. I'm going to fight. And sometimes right. that small little, small little thing is enough to, to change the momentum, which, which it did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then uh, speaking about Andre, um, I ended up playing men's doubles with Andre. We ended up taking bronze. We lost a uh, tight one to Jay Divier and uh, Pat Smith. I uh, ended up losing, I think, nine and ten. But uh, uh, kudos to those guys. Uh, obviously, Callan and uh, DJ won in the finals. Yeah. I believe the I believe the first game was like seventeen fifteen. Yeah, and I haven't I, seen one of those marathon games. Yeah, in a while. yeah, right, Oof. right. Uh, and then they ended up winning a uh, 11, nine in game three. So hats off to those guys. Those guys played really well. Um, I know Callan, um, uh, w I guess what, what DJ told me was that DJ didn't play all that great. And Callan, um, kind of, you know, held the fort down and, and Callan the rock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, uh, taking a look at the weekend, Callan played very well, but I would say the MVP of the weekend, a, a gentleman that played extremely well. And a guy that I, I feel like uh, um, uh, found some new confidence over the weekend. It was Jay Divier. Played yeah. great and played great in doves. Played great in mixed. Uh, him and him and Andrea actually beat Catherine and I in uh, pool play. We were actually up nine two in that game to fifteen. And I'm not gonna lie, Jay basically took the match out of our hands. And Jay 
took over from two nine and uh, uh, it was a complete highlight reel. And it, it kind of seemed like over the weekend, uh, Jay kind of had that highlight reel going all weekend, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously a guy who's got a very pretty game to watch, right? Sure. He, he looks really smooth, can do a little of everything. And I didn't, you know, really studied his game, you know, as much over the last few months, you know, until you were playing him in the finals and, you know, just trying to coach a little bit or give a scouting report, but it's pretty impressive. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that don't have, I wouldn't say he has a, an obvious weapon, you know, one weapon that stands right. out. He just does everything really well. He has all those little nuanced skills and mm -hmm. a really um, impressive competitor whether he's yeah, up sure. or down, he, uh, he fights the whole time, uh, yeah, stays very focused. You can kind of see that in the way that he competes. So, uh, great guy, fun guy, um, yep. can be a little up and down and streaky, but this, this weekend, he seemed to have it all seemed to have it all consistent. going. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, one of the few guys that can like play the left and take that backhand dink out of the air and kind mm -hmm. of roll it, roll it back cross court as a dink. Uh, he can, he can roll it with one. He can slice off the bounce. He can roll it with two. Mm -hmm. I would say that, um, um, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the few guys that probably has a stronger backhand than his forehand side. You know, he's got definitely a, seems like he's got more variety. There, he does. Man. He's got a lot of variety for sure. He can, I mean, he can, he can, he can punch with one. He can punch with two. He can dink with one. He can dink with two. Um, and, and it kind of seems like in singles, uh, he likes to pass better or, 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 Seems like he likes to drive his pass better with the backhand, and with then he two, likes to kind of drop. He likes likes to drop with this for him. Um, but um, yeah, man, the guy guy played well, and um, obviously, you know, uh, talk about upside. He's in a he's in a location there in mm -hmm. Wichita. He's got Matt, Lucy, Pat. Um, I know there's a, there's a couple others in that area. So we, we, we yeah, we, there's a couple other good five O's in that area for sure. So I think yeah. that's one of the little pockets like we talk about that you gotta gotta watch out for we've got our our little pocket now we've yeah. got the you know the florida florida definitely has their their pocket i guess the phoenix area um phoenix. has some some good 5-0 uh, guys yep. there yeah riley uh, uh pesa uh, matt staub uh zane ryan, affleck yeah yeah ryan sure. uh, treffery's there Tre Treff, so it seems yep. like they've got six or seven you know pro level pro level mm -hmm. guys there and um and yeah another one in uh in kansas city there for sure for sure um okay so let's let's jump off a of wpc and let's dive into uh obviously we don't have uh the uh event uh player list for phoenix ppa but we have the event player list for tampa ppa so let's talk about those podium predictions okay um, yeah um i'll start with the uh, women's dubs i guess like it like it Go ahead, brother. Oh so, yeah, uh, I guess in no particular order. Um, I've got Simone and Lucy, uh, Simone and Lucy and uh, Catherine and Callie Smith. I kind of like like how they were playing down in a WPC from what I from what I saw. And then pretty tough to not put uh, the waters on there. Last time I saw Anna Lee, and I haven't seen her uh, in person that much, but uh, was down. Um, at the APP Masters in Punta Gorda, and was a looked, complete highlight reel. She looked incredible. I mean, <laughs> really, good. really good. Like, it's just like, man, this pickleball thing is just way too easy for me. Yeah, so, right. uh, yeah, I'd love to see how she uh, how she does again against like a a Simone and a Lucy that caliber. Right. Uh, right. You know, I'd love to see that. But uh, but yeah, those are those are my three uh, on paper. Yep, um, I have those same three: Anna Lee, Lee, Simone, Lucy, Catherine, Callie. Um, yeah, obviously Jesse, Irene is a good team. Yep. Um, uh, Corinne was playing. Who's Who's Corinne playing with? Corinne's I don't think playing. I wrote that down. I, I think yeah. I think Corinne's playing, playing great with last. I saw. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Corinne's playing with Lauren Stratman. So that's another. Team okay. To, another so team to look out for look out for for sure definitely irene irena and jesse i almost put them on there but maybe something we should talk about like it's pretty drastically different um a california tournament west coast and, and florida and i think definitely longer points more grinding more defense more uh you could say mental toughness uh you know of, of just giving less away in florida so i think you know if this were for example, if this were uh, something in California, I right. probably would have had uh, Jesse and, and Irina in my top three. Since it's Florida, I'm going to put them as, as my sleeper team. But just something for the viewers, you know, where the tournament's being played uh, does, does have a bit of an effect. Plays a very large role for sure. I mean, take a look at... Uh... Take a look at the last two times we've been in Florida. I mean, there there should be no tournaments in Florida in January, February. It's a terrible decision. <laughs> terrible. I mean, I mean, I mean, the freaking APP 
right? It's blowing 25 miles an hour. It's in the forties in the morning. It's halfway cold all day. It's hot, cold. It's like one of those days where like you have a sweater on half the day and then you're hot you take it off and you, know, no, you don't know how to pack. Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's it, you know, WPC, it rains half the time. It's cold. It's windy. Um, but, uh, just, I mean, taking a look at Florida in general, whether it's hot, whether it's windy, it's humid, there's just always conditions. There's always variables. It's very difficult to win in Florida. And it Something seems like that like yeah. for sure. And it seems like the teams that can win in Florida can just take out the variables and, and, and they can bring a B plus game and it doesn't have to be better than that. I mean, if you're going to win in Florida, don't have high, um, expectations, uh, you know, and, uh, expect expect conditions, expect variables, but know that it does not have to be that good. Right. You know, right. uh, t- take a look at California. It's pristine, not as much wind. It's much, it's much drier ball flies a bit more. Um, you know, it just kind of seems like, uh, you can use, uh, use more offense on the West coast than you can mm-hmm. on the East coast, right? East coast. It's true. I mean, it's, uh, it's a, it's a battle of fitness. It's a battle of physique, it's very physical. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and it, yeah, I mean, just like what you said, there's a lot more grinding and a lot more scrambling and, uh, how many, how many points in Florida end up with two people being at the baseline, trying to like defend overheads and then, and then hitting a drop and coming in and, and, and you just have this weird rally where you're on offense, then you're back on defense and then it's bang, bang, bang. There's just, there's so many odd things taking place, uh, in, in, in rallies in Florida, you know, especially when it's windy. Well, it's, it's, it's really tough when you can't put the ball away or when you struggle to put the ball away when you're in an offensive position. That's why I think it's so mental, right? Because like you're talking about, there's so many times where it's, you're in a position to win the point, the other team gets back and they neutralize and you've got to reset and get back into dinking mode and not think about, Oh, I just let them off the hook. And that takes a lot of, um, you know, emotional control. Yeah. It's very, very true. Very true for sure. But, uh, you know, take a look at Kyle, take a look at Ben, take a look at Simone. People who train in Florida are at a huge advantage. Uh, and, and, and that's why there's such a big pocket in Florida, because when you can get comfortable in Florida, you can get comfortable anywhere. That's true. That's true. It's very true. I mean, honestly, if you, if you want to be, uh, or I, I guess if you want to have a better understanding of your surroundings, if you want to play in tough conditions, get your ass to Florida. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier, probably a lot easier making the adjustment to maybe shorten some points and use more offense than getting comfortable playing that longer patient style throughout the whole day. Right, 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 for sure. Um, okay, so uh, what's your predictions for women's singles? Okay, yes, yeah, singles, singles. Uh, so I went with uh, some good, good ladies in the singles draw. My three are uh, Simone, um, Catherine. And uh, I put Leia, Leia in there. That's right. So I think she's, right. she's playing some, playing some pretty tough singles these days. There's still, uh, again, there, there's Irina in the mix. Who's going to be really tough. Um, yeah. Vivian David uh, ha- has played some really good um, singles in the past in Florida. So there's some sleepers, but uh, yeah, for sure. to me, I like, I like those three. How about you? Um, yeah, I have uh, Leia, Simone and Catherine. So same three as you, obviously coming from WPC, uh, Simone and Catherine, uh, you know, tied for first and Leia ended up taking bronze. Um, but, um, I know, um, um, kind of a, kind of a fun little thing to talk about. Callie, Callie Smith, uh, did not, uh, well, pr- probably just wasn't all that educated with how to play singles. Yeah. And so Callie, bless her heart, had to play Catherine that very last match of the team event. Obviously Catherine was playing for team world. And uh, Catherine, I'm not going to lie, uh, beat the bricks off of Callie. But one day later, one day later, Callie plays Catherine in the semifinals uh, and to, to, to get Callie in the finals, the WPC. And she loses, I um, can't remember what the score was in, in the third, but it was pretty tight. But it, was, ends, it was three tight in the third, yeah. Yeah, she ends up losing uh, yeah, 8-11, 9-11 in the third after she had just played uh, that, that team event. And I'm pretty sure she'd lost like 21, five or something like that. So it comes to show that, I mean, Callie for her to be able to turn it on that quick and for her to be able to kind of find it, you know, within a 16 hour period, I mean, it's, it's not too bad, you know? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's impressive. And, you know, we were, impressive. we were chatting, I think a little when she was losing, you know, pretty badly in, in the, in the worlds and, 
you know, it was just, you could tell from an ability wise, you know, Catherine's very good, but she shouldn't be destroying somebody as talented as Callie right. that much. So once she figured right. out, I think um, maybe some better tactics, uh, right. it probably evened it up a little bit, but a yeah. uh, tip for viewers at home, you know, if you're playing singles or new to singles, it's really a little different than tennis as far as it's not about how hard you hit it or even about how clean you hit it. What's really, really important is that your weight when you're hitting the strut is going forward and you're getting some weight going into the court to give you the option to, to come to net and take off those angles. And that's probably, I didn't watch Callie the second day, but I'm guessing that's probably the adjustment uh, she made to make that a little tighter. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back for this. But yeah, that is definitely what I told Callie. I said, okay. Callie, you <laughs> are one of the most f f uh, fit and like physical girls out here. And um, um, yeah, I mean, you should just try to be a bit more physical as you play and try to turn this match uh, uh, into like a fitness fest, you know, so I think um, and I was and I was also telling her that she has to come in on the return. Yeah, she has to do a bit more when she comes in. She's got to, you know go for more on the serve, go for more on the return. Yep. And, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, a nice little turnaround. And uh, um, Callie obviously wasn't able to play Leia uh, in that third, fourth match. So uh, obviously Leia ended up taking the bronze. Callie took fourth, but uh, uh, Callie got the short end of the stick at WPC. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's too bad. Too bad. But yeah. she fought hard. She did well. She and, did. Um, she did. Very I, I love the way that she competes, you know, talk about somebody so who's, who can be loud. She gets really into it, really animated. But you know what I love about, about her energy is, you know, it's never a come on that's directed, you know, at an opponent. It's always right. just to herself or to her For partner, sure. keeping that positive energy on her side of the court. So love watching, uh, watching her compete. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, mixed doubles. Who do you got? Okay, for mixed. Uh, no, then it's not going to hurt my feelings. I was going to say, you're get ready because you're not on the list. So don't, don't uh -huh. get uh, All right, so prove me wrong, I guess. Uh, so I went with Ben <laughs> Simone, uh, Matt and Lucy, and I went with uh, Riley and Michelle. That's kind of my sleeper. I don't think I've ever seen them play together. And um, Michelle's really good, but also uh, from tournament to tournament, she can be a little on the streaky side. Don't get mad at me if you're watching this, Michelle. Um, got a lot of game, but Riley can be superman and mixed as, as well as anybody with his, as long as he is and as athletic as he is and that's true for sure. yeah uh i think they're they're definitely a team that can make a splash uh yeah. what what are your uh, what are your three yeah i mean you can never count riley out and mix the guy does does everything pretty well and can cover a lot of court and probably one of the best poachers on the men's game um for sure. but uh yeah and 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 michelle uh, I mean, it could be six Oh Michelle, or it could be low five Oh Michelle for sure. Very true. Yeah, uh, yeah. and, and Michelle, I say that with love and no disrespect at all, because there's plenty of days where I could be a low five Oh as well. Um, sure. but, um, yeah, so my predictions, just like yours, I'm just going to slide Lee and I into that, uh, into that category. Um, obviously like Riley and Michelle, it's a good team. They're just not going to beat Lee and I. <laughs> um but uh well, i think it's the first time playing together so there might be some yeah some you know cobwebs and some chemistry right. stuff that they'll have to work out and and i'm just gonna throw this out there i'm 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 not too sure those two like each other so i'm pretty sure it could either go very well or it could okay. go very bad yeah yeah um, just, uh, so uh give them a bunch of middle balls get them get them hey. fighting a little bit <laughs> why not <laughs> stir it up baby <laughs> stir the pot <laughs> love it uh good stuff okay uh men's 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 uh, what do you got okay so talking about men's now um so my three for men's and and by the way just looking at the draw for mixed and and uh and for men specifically saw a lot of sleeper teams of uh, people that could make a splash that right. you know their levels there they could definitely you know this could be a breakthrough tournament for a lot of teams but just on paper for me i'm going with uh you and riley um, uh, Steve Deacon and Matt Wright be kind of a fun little, little pairing to, uh, elite guys that I haven't seen play together before. And, uh, I'm going with Pat and Jay. Um, seems like a lot of people play them close, but credit to those guys. They, uh, it, they seem it. to step it up in the big moments and get through a lot of these tight matches. So, um, th those are, those are my three. I like it. And Hey, uh, is Mr. Uh, Mr. Johns not playing men's? 
I did not see uh, see him on the list with anybody, which is odd because I did see him down for singles and yeah, and for and for mixed. Yeah, right, 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 for sure. I would assume I would assume he's playing, but uh, uh, maybe maybe Colin had to pull out last minute. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, I got uh, Deco Adam, Steve Matt, uh, and and Steve Matt. That's a uh, uh, this is their second time playing together. They played. Oh, okay. Uh, Vegas Open two years ago and ended up taking uh, silver. Okay. Um, so it's going to be interesting to to see see those guys um, see those guys play together. But obviously a good team, uh, good hands, clubby hands. You know, Steve's a great counter puncher. Matt's uh, Matt's got plenty of offense. Um, and uh, I'm throwing Riley and myself in there as well. So that's my that's my three. Yep, um, like taking a, taking a look at singles. Uh, I'm going to ask you one thing. Are you going to show Sherry any love? Um, I mean, I, I didn't put him on. I didn't put him on the three. I mean, oh, nothing no, against Sherry. No love for the share bear. You know, the reason I put him on there for WPC was the format. I mean, nothing against him, but you know, the oh, format okay, right, of a little right. bit more of a break in between. It ended up being a lot of singles in one day and was pretty physical anyways. But, uh, uh, I'm a fan of Sherry. I think he'll make a deep run, but to be yeah. honest, I think that he'll, I think fitness may play a factor, uh, late in the day. So I went with, uh, you and Ben, and then I threw, I threw Jay on there. I was deciding between ah, Jay, yeah, sure. Zane right, right. and Sherry. Right. Um, but I think Jay matches up pretty well against Zane. Doesn't seem to have uh, an issue, uh, with his serve as much right. as most. And, uh, just matchup wise seems to, uh, seems to make Zane a little bit uncomfortable, yeah. Um, and, and seem to be playing, uh, you know, pretty well against you, uh, as well in the final. Yeah. One, one thing that I saw in that, uh, semifinal when, uh, Jay was playing Zane was that how, how deep and how clean was Jay hitting his return off of, off of Zane's kicky surf. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it showed, it showed no respect for that serve at all, you know, and, yeah. and it comes to show too, that, you know, uh, uh, Jay was doing, and this, like, this is a great tip for the viewers, uh, if you're playing against somebody who's serving really aggressively, if you can cock your arm and if you're looking to slice, the only way to manage all that pace and the only mm. way to absorb is by being very sturdy and almost treating your arm like it's a piece of two by four. And Jay did a very good job at just being locked and being cocked and, and you know, uh, uh, keeping it simple and kind of pushing through it with his shoulder. But um, yeah, I, I thought Jay was able to use big body parts on the return, get the return really deep. And then I'm not going to lie, Zane did not know what to do with that depth. Well, I think Zane's used to, yeah, he's used to getting a weak reply. So he For can sure. just commit yeah. to a big offensive shot on his next ball. You start having that depth get consistently deeper. Those winners turn directly into errors, right? right. So um, right. right, yeah, so we'll see if they play again. Should be a good matchup, but just seems like, you know, uh, it's, it's funny how it's not just a ability always. It's how uh, different styles uh, match up with, with one another. I think he's a – Jay's a tough matchup for, for Zane. I think so. I think so. Um, okay, brother, give me your instructional nugget. All right, yeah, so uh, coaching tip uh, this week uh, about ready position. Just something for the viewers to think about. Um, you know, you're, you're always – if you've taken a, a lesson or a clinic camp, uh, they've probably talked about having the paddle up and ready, but we always seem to talk about ready position from the kitchen line. One thing that never really gets talked about is how does that ready position change as we're further back, as we're in the transition zone or baseline. So I think just general rule of thumb, consider bringing your ready position, or I should say, allow your ready position to be a little bit lower if you're broken down in the transition uh, transition zone and likely playing defense. Um, really, when you think about it logically, to have your paddle up covering your chest if you're in the middle of the court you're protecting against a shot this ball that you probably should be letting go right so uh right. when i teach my students i talk about not only do you want to be low but really the only thing you're worried about is low shots because if it's above your waist or belly button and you're standing in the middle of the court and it's a speed up that ball is likely going out so allow your ready position and your paddle to be a little bit lower uh, i think it helps you with your discipline and letting out balls go and just really there's not much of a point in having it up real high when everything that you need to worry about is your waist and below now that's not as true when you're at the kitchen line some of the shots that are at our rib cage or at our chest we still maybe need to play a volley on but as we get back further allow yourself to uh to drop that ready position a little bit lower I like it like it, I like it. 
Um, so my instruction on nuggets going to be, um, so taking a look at the month of January and I, and I guess kind of, uh, carrying over into February, um, you know, when I played the APP tournament, um, uh, game, game to 15, when I was playing with Andre, we were playing, uh, Adam Stone and Steve Deacon were down 311. We ended up coming back and winning 1513. This last weekend, I was down 0 9 to Eden, 115 13. I was down 3 9 in game three to Andre, 113 11. And I'm down 0 7 in game two to Simone and Callan and freaking never say never. And we end up coming back and winning. There's a theme here. I can there, sense it. <laughs> so, a theme here. no matter how tall and high that mountain seems to climb it is not that high if you take a look at yourself in the mirror and you take a deep breath and you recognize how much time you have and and and, and you don't panic and you take it point by point and you find find your true identity or, or you find your best stuff when it's needed and you s stay within yourself it is not that difficult to keep inching your way back uh, it is, it is, uh, uh, when, when you feel like that panic is hitting and, and you're rushing and you're trying to do way too much and you're overcompensating, know that you have more time than you think. And this game is a battle of runs yeah. and you can inch your way back if you believe it. And if you take it point by point, um, I cannot say it any differently than that. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Great point. I mean, one thing too, in those moments, it's important to, to think or be able to think from your opponent's perspective. You talked about it in the match with you guys against Callan and Simone. You knew that if you just started getting a few points, you know, and then plant that seed of doubt and uh, they could feel that momentum. So even if you're down 0 07, 0 08, if you can just start getting a little bit of daylight, a string a few points together, just know from your opponent's perspective, they're going to feel that they're going to now, the pressure is going to completely switch over to them. So fight till the end. You never know what's going to happen. It's true. Uh, Kyle, any, uh, any last, uh, last thing here for the uh, viewers? Uh, no, man, just uh, enjoy it as always. Thanks for having us. I'm not playing uh, the next two PPAs. I know you will be there. So best of luck, my friend. Get get after it. Thanks, brother. Um, I'm going to be I missing be, you in my corner. I will be watching be... from a distance. Know that. Yeah, I will well, you, I will well, be you... by texting. I will be texting. Yeah, right. You better be texting me. <laughs> Call a timeout. Check your phone. Yeah, right. I'll, have a, I'll have a bunch right. of advice on there. Don't worry. Take More care. Take More care you of your want. boy. Take care of your boy. <laughs> uh, but in closing here, uh, everybody have a great day. Be real. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. Follow us on our YouTube channel. Take care. Have a good day. Okay. <laughs> Take two. Oh, <laughs>